Here we are at the front page of Lucid Press. In our last session, we talked about how to go to SharePoint and download a CSU extension logo and then import it into Lucid Press. In this session, we'll work with a very simple uh, web document and insert a graphic, a logo into that document. If we go up here to the upper left hand corner in Lucid Press, we can see my documents, print documents, and web social media documents. My documents are where the documents that you are currently working on are kept. Print documents are templates created by Creative Services um, for our use, and web social media documents are templates created for social media use by Creative Services as well. What we're going to do, and we'll start with a very simple one and then get more complex, is grab this Facebook profile photo. We're going to select it. When we select it, it moves from the web social media documents and into my documents so we don't overwrite the existing template. So I'll click OK. And now we have the template for the Facebook profile here on our document pane. I'm going to use Control and Plus to make it a little larger. And now we're ready to begin. First thing we'll do is delete this existing text. You need to make sure you have the correct thing selected here. You don't want the outer box selected, but rather the inner text box. And so with that selected, I'll select all the text and hit delete. I'll then go to our left side navigation, choose image. And actually, because we have an all green background here, I'm going to be working with an all white image. So we'll work with the Arapaho Master Gardener CSU extension logo. I'll double click it. And that puts it on the page, though clearly too large for the uh, size of the document. Our next step is to size it down then. So we'll take one of these corner sizing boxes and make it a little smaller. We can fine tune this later. We just want a workable size. And I'll select it. Oops, I selected the wrong thing there. I'll select it and move it to roughly center. We'll worry about being exactly center horizontally and vertically in a bit. Right now, let's make sure we are at the right size. I'm going to go slightly bigger here and let me explain my reasoning. Um, we have under view and grid, show grid. And you can't see it very well because this is an all green background. So I'll zoom in just a bit so you can see those grid lines and then zoom back out. And there's a rule of thumb that the O in Colorado State University, that vertical size of that O, meaning the longest way of the O, needs to be able to fit between the logo and the border. Right now, that O is about maybe two thirds of the size of a box. And we have about a box and a half maybe between the logo and the border. So I'm going to select my logo, make it just a tad larger. And let's go with that. Our next step is to center this horizontally and vertically. You can do it freehand by grabbing the logo and you'll see that when I am centered vertically and horizontally, I have those blue lines coming down to let me know I'm centered. So I could let go right here and be done. An easier way, however, and notice that when I move the logo, those blue lines go away. If you don't want to drag it around till you get those blue lines. Another way to center this again on both axes is to go to Arrange, Align Objects, first center it horizontally, and then center it vertically. And that is another way to center this. One last note on centering this and then we'll request our approval. If I go to View and go to Guides, I have show guides on and I have snap to guides on. Now guides can be the blue lines that we saw previously that showed us the vertical center and the horizontal center. They also allow us to line up our objects on the page, such as text boxes and logos with other objects on the page. And the snap to guide um, is helpful in making that logo or that text box snap exactly to where you want it to. So I have both show guides on and snap to guides on. Let me go back to grid real quick. I do have the show grid on. I don't have the snap to grid on because I don't have a particular interest in snapping to a piece of the grid. So I keep the grid on, not on snap to. 
I keep guides on, and I do have them on Snap too. And with all that said, we have a logo in place here, we have it properly sized, and we have it centered. So our last step is then to request approval. Best person to send it to is Joanne Littlefield. Any notes that you have for her can go into this box, and then you click request, and shortly you'll get your request approved or disapproved. If it's disapproved, you'll get an email saying why it was disapproved and ask for future changes. If it was approved, you will get a download box here. And from that download box, you can download your logo in any one of several formats like JPEG, Ping, PDF, and so on. And that is how to take a graphic and put it onto a template.